we are going to head up Main Street just a tiny ways. I'm going to tell you a little bit of history about our park and about some of our uh, most beloved contributors to the park. So the design of Main Street and the entrance is actually designed after a theater. You notice at the front you have the red bricks and you can't really see what's happening. And then you come through the train station gates and it's the big unveil of the castle, right? So it's the curtains opening up, the red curtains. And what do you see before the movies? You see the credits. Well, our credits are our windows here on Main Street. The windows all represent someone who is near and dear to Walt's heart or who had some kind of really big inspiration with Disneyland and the creating of Disneyland. This is a really important place for the Disney Epic Mickey games as well. Uh, just as Walt wanted to recreate part of his childhood, we wanted to recreate part of his park. Uh, Wasteland is a world that no player had ever visited, and, and so no player really cared about why would they want to save it. And so we wanted to create a place that was so familiar that they would instantly feel that sense of, of, of like, I need to make this right. And so we recreated at the beginning of Disney Epic Mickey 1 and Disney Epic Mickey 2, we recreated the square, the train station, most of Main Street, uh, and the view of the castle, that iconic view. That's one of the first things you see in both games. Uh, and it was really important to ground the game in reality. We built things as accurately as we could. We even got um, elevations that had accurate uh, architectural detail, accurate colors. We built everything as accurately as we could. And then we did what we call wonkifying. We, we gave it a twist, so it would be familiar but strange uh, and a little bit melancholy, so players would want to actually make it right again. Uh, so as you walk down this, this street, think about that when you play the game, uh, and I hope you feel like you've been here before. So here above me, we actually have three very important windows dedicated to ABC. When Walt was trying to find funding for the park, Roy, his older brother, went to ABC. <laughs> He knew that ABC was looking for a hit television series from Walt, and Walt was looking for funding. So it worked out pretty well. If you think about Walt Disney's contribution to, uh, to culture and entertainment in the 20th century, he was at the forefront of absolutely everything. Uh, first sound cartoon that, that, that made any kind of significant splash, first color cartoon, first uh, feature film, uh, animated feature film, first stereo sound, first Hollywood studio to be involved with television. Instead of seeing television as a threat, he saw television as a potential ally, and he was first there as well. And, and at the Tiki Room earlier, we saw the first robotics anyone ever interacted with in, in real life. So in every way, he was, he was just the first. <laughs> We have Robert and Richard Sherman's window, the Sherman brothers, who were our amazing songwriters. Um, they wrote, basically, you think of it this way, if the song gets stuck in your head, it was the Sherman brothers. When I was auditioning composers uh, to create the, the sound of Disney Epic Mickey, uh, the test consisted of two things. Give me a Mickey's theme that we can play whenever Mickey appears, uh, and give me It's a Small World Inside Out. Whatever that means to you. So uh, that's, we, we used the Sherman Brothers tune as, as kind of our, our test. And I, I auditioned about a dozen composers and was ready to make a decision on one when at the last minute uh, a CD crossed my desk uh, from a, a guy named Jim Dooley, uh, who won an Academy Award for his music for Pushing Daisies. Uh, stunning composer, he's really wonderful. Uh, and his I said, it's too late, I don't have time for this, and we've got to make a decision and go. But uh, several people said, no, listen to this one. You've got to listen to this. I listened to it. We called him up, gave him the test. 24 hours later, we got back his version of Small World Inside Out and uh, his version of a Mickey's theme. Uh, and it, in fact, his version of Mickey's theme, his audition tape, I guess, is uh, what you hear over our closing credits in, in the game now. It was so wonderful. Uh, and he now and um, a, a lyricist named Mike Himmelstein actually composed all of the songs for Disney Epic Mickey 2. So uh, now we're, we're trying to follow in the footsteps of Walt Disney and, and the Sherman Brothers uh, and actually create songs as part of, uh, part of the gaming experience. Um, one, one more thing, the, the, uh, the cast member window over there, uh, Walt said that, that the magic really happens when, when, the, cast, when the, uh, the, the public shows up. Uh, that's nowhere more true than for us at, when, we're, when we're making a game. 
until players actually show up in, in, our, in our world, in our wasteland, uh, nothing happens. The story doesn't take place. Uh, nothing, nothing happens at all. And so uh, for us, uh, you're all our cast members. All of the players are our cast members. And without you, we've got nothing. So uh, hope you enjoy the game. Uh, and make your own story. Make your own magic as you play. That's, that's what Junction Point's all about. That's what Disney Epic Mickey is all about. Beware of the consequences of your choices. That's exactly right. You get to define what it means to be a hero in this world. So the, the story of how and why Walt built Disneyland reflects exactly uh, one of the major goals for the Disney Epic Mickey games. Most games are, are designed for a specific target audience. They, everybody talks about demographics and tween girls and teen boys and frat boys and all that stuff. And after talking to people at, at uh, the Disney Studios and at Pixar, um, we were all inspired to make what, what people at Disney often describe as entertainment for everyone. We wanted to make a game that, that kids and adults could enjoy uh, equally and in their own way. And with Disney Epic Mickey 2, we've taken one step further. Not only can they, the kids and adults, boys and girls, men and women enjoy the game, in their own way, but they can actually play it together. That's why the power of two is so important. Co-op play, telling a story together with your friends and family uh, is what it's all about. So um, what we're trying to do is have the game reflect the same spirit that, uh, that Disneyland does and in our own small way. Maybe that's the, the greatest tribute we can pay to Walt Disney, uh, not just recreating his world, but trying to capture the, the reasons he built this uh, in the first place.